Welcome, Commanders, to Starfleet Academy for Star Trek Fleet Command. I am your instructor, Captain Pike. Today we'll be discussing Borg Solo Armadas, or BSAs for short. Borg Solo Armadas were introduced as an update to Borg content from Scopely in January of 2023 for Assimilation Part 1. This adds the Solo Armada gameplay as well as new crew, research, and refinery items to the Borg content. The goal of this video is to help you to find and activate the necessary research, understand the Borg tech in the refinery and suggest where to focus, locate the systems that house the Borg Solo Armadas, pick the best crews, give you the tools to punch up hitting the largest Borg Solo Armadas you can. Give some guidance on the new BSA exocomps and Vidar loot runs. Research is straightforward and found under the combat section of the research trees. There are four researches you can activate. Federation Translink Disruptor. Klingon Translink Disruptor. Romulan Translink Disruptor, and the Jellyfish Translink Disruptor. These researches enable the Badar style buff for the ships of the respective research granting 35,000 damage bonus against Borg Solo Armadas. These researches are critical to your success with Borg Solo Armadas. Make sure you do them. You only need to do the researches for the ships you will be using against the Borg Solo Armadas. There is no point in doing them all at first unless you want to. Just remember, if you get a ship from a faction you have not activated the research for, or get a shiny new ISS jellyfish, that you activate the appropriate research first. The primary benefit of the Borg Solo Armadas comes from the Borg Solo Exchanges in the Borg Tech Refinery. You will find the refinery button off the top left slide out menu under the player profile image. Look for the Borg text section near the bottom of the refinery list. We will look at the refinery in five different groups. The Armada Exchange. This is where you will convert your Armada credits earned from defeating Borg Solo Armadas. You can get from these exchanges Vidar Loot Exocomps, Fleet Commander Credits, Commander XP, Borg Crew Shards, Rhodium Particles, and Officer XP. The next section was not added with Borg Solo Armadas. That is the Nanoprobe Conversion. Here is where you take the nanoprobes you farm from Borg Tactical Probes and turn it into either charged nanoprobes or active nanoprobes, or both. The cooldown on these is daily and I recommend you try and do max pulls every day on these. The next section was added with the Borg Solo Armadas and that is the Borg Solo Armada Directives. This item gives you uncommon BSA directives every day. It scales with your Vidar. At max Vidar you get enough directives for one uncommon BSA. The remaining sections in this Borg Tech Refinery were not added by the Borg Solo Armada addition to Star Trek Fleet Command. These are the Latinum Antique Refinery. This lets you convert your Latinum Antique tokens into ship XP, Latinum cells, transwarp cells, par steel, titanium, and dilithium tokens. Lucrative three-star warp tokens. These items are lottery delivered and not guaranteed. The cooldown for the Latinum Antique Refinery is five days. The final group is the charged nanoprobe conversions. Here you can convert nanoprobes, charged nanoprobes, into independent credits, Federation credits, Klingon credits, Romulan credits, Federation Faction Reputation, Klingon Faction Reputation, and Romulan Faction Reputation. I highly recommend that you at least do the independent credits every day. 
The rest is subject to what you're trying to do in game. In summary, for the Borg Tech Refinery, we want to make sure that we at least do our inert nanoprobe conversions from max chest poles. We want to grab our solo armada directives and we want to make sure we don't miss out on the charged nanoprobe exchange for the independent credits. Finding the Borg Solo Armada Systems Borg Solo Armada Systems are easily identifiable. Look for the green clouds surrounding them. There are nine systems, starting with 235 systems in G3 Romulan space off of Argandu. Up to a level 60 systems, Orin Sigma 9. Now that we know where to look for the Borg Solo Armadas, let's take a look at the Armadas themselves. There are three different levels of Borg Solo Armadas. Uncommon, Rare, and Epic. The two Romulan level 35 systems only contain the Uncommon. You'll start to see the Rare and Epic in the 42 system of Patoran. There's not much difference between each of the Borg Solo Armadas. The only big difference, of course, is their power. This means your crew will work on all of the Borg Solo Armadas as long as you have the power to defeat it. Using the Uncommon as our visual baseline, you'll see that the rares hit at about 2x and the epics hit at about four times harder than the Uncommon. With this understanding, you can determine what level of Borg Solo Armada you'll be able to defeat. For example, if you can comfortably hit a 45 uncommon, you should be able to hit the level 46 rare in the same system. Now, if you seem to take over 50% of total ship damage on a rare, then expect to struggle on the epic in the same system. And then you would want to consider actually tearing down the next system for your epic Borg Solo Armada. With the Borg Solo Armadas, the warp range seems to be the limiting factor on how high you can go when hitting the BSAs. Hitting as high as you can will get you the best loot and the best return from the Armada exchanges in the Borg Tech refinery. We always want to be successful every time, but we learn the most from when we fail. Understanding your ship's capabilities sometimes means you need to fail. A single failure can set you up for long-term success against Borg Solo Armadas. Don't be afraid to take that chance on that uncommon understanding how the other two scale. Crewing your fleet for BSAs. These are our recommendations based upon our crew availability input from other commanders, and research. The intent of this section is to help you to select the best crew from your crew selection. There are several variables that will play into the success against Borg Solo Armadas, such as research, ship strength, and the buffs you run. There's a link in the description of this video to our Discord. Come join us, because there's always plenty to discuss when it comes to crew. Share your comments with us on this video, and if you found it helpful so far, go ahead and give it that like. And you won't hurt our feelings if you share with your friends. Here's what we want to consider when crewing our ships for our armada group. What ships are you going to use for the Borg Solo Armadas? What is the class of those ships? Are they battleships, explorers, interceptors? What is the power level of those ships? Do the ships have special abilities based off crew we might want to leverage? Which of these ships do you consider your heavy hitter? Have you noticed a crew build that seems to work really well on that ship? What crew members do we actually have available for us to run the Armada with? 
considering both the ship we're going to be using and the BSA stats, like their attack and mitigation, think about what you can do to put out the most amount of damage while mitigating the damage coming to you. In the following recommended crews, we are trying to leverage Crew Synergy, increasing our chances to generate critical hits, maximizing that critical damage, mitigating incoming damage. Let's start with our big hitter. This may not be your most powerful ship, but it's the ship that you perceive puts out the most damage. This most likely is your go-to ship for other activities such as daily grinding, PvP, and possibly joining Alliance Armadas. For me, that happens to be my pylum, and here is my preferred crew for it. I have been fortunate enough to get most of the DS9 crew, so I like to run Cisco, O'Brien, and Bashir. Cisco provides mitigation based on crew health, increasing armor, shield deflection, and dodge of the ship with his captain ability. His officer ability is a more consistent version of Khan's perk, offering a cumulative increase to crit chance each round. O'Brien will provide synergy to Cisco, increasing his mitigation, but he also has a nice officer ability by increasing the number of shots per round. Bashir. He maxes out our synergy with Cisco. What I really like about Bashir though is he is a critical chance machine. Starting at an impressive percentage on solo armadas and guess what? Borg solo armadas are of course solo. At tier 1 he increases your critical chance by 20% going up to 60% when max. This is huge starting point for critical chance for your ship and only improves each round with Cisco. Alternatively, we could run Cisco, O'Brien, and throw Gorkin or Lorca on. What we get out of Gorkin and Lorca is creating the whole bridge condition, which will increase the damage per hit against the Borg Solo Armada. This also amplifies our critical damage. The downside is we lose full synergy with Cisco, and that nice base starting critical chance percentage from Bashir. I have also had success with this crew on my Coronar, but I prefer to still run it on my Pylum because it puts out the most damage. Our second ship, we want to absorb as much damage as possible. This might be your largest ship, but not the ship that puts out the most amount of damage. For me, that's my Coronar. My preferred crew on it is 5-6 Lorca. Five is a must because of her mitigation that she brings with a very nice base of 200% and higher when you give her synergy. Her loot boost perk is also pretty nice. <clears throat> Nobody's going to turn down a base of 20% with a max of 100% in extra loot. But the primary need for her is really her mitigation. Six is there primarily to boost the mitigation from five with synergy. His officer ability with a base of 5% up to 40% of crew attack, increasing accuracy and both hull and shield piercing cumulatively each round for each weapon is very nice. If this ship has multiple weapons that fire around, this stacks pretty quick. Lorca is here to give us the whole breach state which will increase our damage, especially to our crit damage. We chose Lorca with no alternative to Gorkin because his ability is a chance alone and doesn't require that the ship strikes a critical to activate. A direct alternative to this crew is to run 5-7 Lorca. We replace 6 with 7 to give synergy with 5, but he also boosts the health of our crew which helps five. The downside is we're losing the damage or technically piercing boost that we get from six. There are several options we could also use as Talorka. We can replace him with Khan or Bashir. Both would increase potential critical hit chance of the ship. Of course, if Bashir's on our big hitter ship, then we would only able to use Khan. And now that we've used our finest on our first two ships, what are we going to do with the third one? This ship, we wanted to leverage any opportunity we can to improve its survival. 
the longer this ship survives, the more potential damage it can absorb, and the better success we'll have against the BSA. Consider the class of ship you're using and any of its special abilities when deciding what crew to use. My third ship, I prefer to use my Katinga. It of course is a battleship, which means it has very weak shields, but strong hull. Alternatively, a good thing to use here with this next crew would be an interceptor as well, where it also has lower shields, but leverages its dodge, primarily for mitigation. The crew I prefer here is Picard, Beverly, and Eurydice. Picard's captain ability is going to enhance our officer's abilities for Beverly and Eurydice. His officer ability will increase the critical damage. This will be a nice perk for him, but it's not our primary focus. It's going to be his boost to Beverly and Eurydice. Beverly's officer ability is going to increase our mitigation, and of course, it'll have a nice little boost from Picard. And Eurydice's officer ability is going to take advantage of the lower shield health on this particular ship. When shields are depleted, she has a chance to restore our shields for this ship based on her level. At tier 1, she has a 35% chance to restore 5% of our ship's shields. For a ship that leverages hull or dodge for mitigation, this can really extend the amount of damage a ship can take since it can usually mitigate a lot of damage post shields. With her being boosted by Picard's captain ability and Picard getting the synergy from Beverly, Eurydice has a large chance to work and this only gets better with her tier. Best results I have seen is when she is tier 4 or 5 as she almost never doesn't generate shields. Alternatively, if you don't have Picard and Beverly, you could try Kelvin Pike and Morio, which will synergize with each other and provide the same kind of boost to Eurydice. If you don't have Eurydice, you might want to consider running a ship like the Enterprise if you have it and place on one of the Kirks or a morale officer to then boost its shields, extending its life. What crews have you had success with against Borg solo armadas? Are you having success with punching up in those armadas? Are you struggling with something and need some help? Click the link in the video description and join us in Discord. Feel free to ask your questions there. Go ahead and comment on this video. Give us a like and share, but please let us know. To fully engage in Borg Silo Armadas, we need to farm inert nanoprobes. Nanoprobes are dropped by Borg Tactical Probes in select systems. These systems are accessed using a transwarp cell. Normally, we'll hunt Borg Tactical Probes with Vidars. As a matter of fact, that's all you probably want to hunt Borg Tactical Probes with. But ours and Borg Tactical Probes are original content for the Borg. They were not added with the Borg Solo Armadas. Two runs against the Tactical Probes should give you enough Nano Probes to do the recommended pulls from the Borg Refinery. Hunting the Tactical Probes can take a little bit of time, so once you've done the exchange, you'll want to use the Vidar Loot Exocomps that you get from it. The exocomps will reduce the time it takes to get the loot by increasing the loot drops from the tactical probes. This will reduce your time. The exocomps are time limited. Because of this, once you've maxed your first Vidar, I would highly recommend getting a second. That way you can actually send both Vidars in on a single run, maximizing the consumption of a single exocomp. Alternatively, you can make several runs in a single day, consuming all but one of your tokens. Leaving the one token will allow you to overflow those tokens once you've refilled your stores. If you do like to burn up all of your tokens, just be aware of the vents that are coming up. You don't want to shortchange your transwarp cells if there's an event where you may need it. You get two transwarp cells a day to allow you to be able to do your dailies. This caps out at eight. 
but can be overflowed to more from events or by leveraging the fact that you get two a day and by ending in an odd count on a day you can eventually overflow this. Here are a few Vidar crews you can try. If you've obtained the Strange New Worlds crew, you can run Pike, Ahura, and Una. This is my favorite, but that's for my situation, of course. I have the Infinitus Refit that grants bonus loot, and I've been running the BSA Exocomps when I can. You could try 574, which is an almost full synergy crew here as well. It's very nice as 5 provides mitigation and the bonus loot, 7 boosts 5 with the health and synergy, and 4 boosts your cargo. 4 is very nice if you have it, or if you don't have the Prime Vidar cargo, which increases your max cargo size by 100%. You can also run Pike, Morio, Chen, or PMC. This is one of your classic hostile grinding crews, and it works well on Borg Tactical Pros. You can alternatively use Talon instead of Chen, but I would go with the one that seems to work best for you. But the data shows that Chen should mitigate more damage if you're going less than three rounds on Borg Tactical Pros. Taking all this information, now let's go run against a few Borg Solo Armadas. I ran several BSAs in Thora Beta 6. Here you can see I'm running several exocomps to help give me a kicker since this is technically punching up for me. Here we have a 54 epic that I'm about ready to take down. The crews I'm running are my preferred crews. The Pylum is running the DS9 crew with Cisco, O'Brien, and Bashir. My Coronar is running 5, 6, and Lorca. And I've got my Picard, Beverly, Eurydice crew on my Katinga. Fingers crossed. That run was pretty interesting. I lost my Coronar, but look at the uh, damage the Katinga took, but it still survived. Most likely, I had a bad proc of O'Brien or something like that during that run. If you notice here, I'm scouting the various BSAs. I want to see what the loot uh, they carry. For each set of directives I run, I want to make sure I get the maximum return from the uh, BSAs. See here, I got my uh, coronar back with a fresh hull. Uh, didn't repair the pylum, but uh, I also didn't repair the katinga. So I must have some pretty good faith. And actually, I do because I know I can hit a rare without any boosts at all. So I'm going to Ceratos boost uh, a couple ships here. Uh, and the biggest reason I'm doing this is I'm trying to chain hit or see how many uh, BSAs I can chain hit uh, without having to repair the Coronar and the Pylum, especially on rares and uncommons. You can tell this by the timing that I used to actually activate those boosts. I did it very close to the end of the armada so that I could run a potentially two more armadas based upon the timer on my uh, boosts.
we lost the Katinga, but that's okay. I expected that. It actually did its job in mitigating the amount of damage that the other two ships were going to take. So we'll get that back into play. And while we still have time on our timers for our Ceratos and Defiant buffs, and we'll fire off another Armada. So uh, looking at my hull, I've decided uh, it's okay. I'm going to go ahead and run this uh, last epic, 54 epic, um, using up the remaining boosts on my ships. Part of the reason I am doing this chain hitting and I'm not just hitting the one or two or maybe three that I normally would do is because of the event. And that brings something else that I wanted to talk about uh, in this video is how often are you going to want to run the Borg Solo Armadas? After getting a feel for them this month, my goal is to actually run these as the uh, exchanges open up in the Borg Tech Refinery. I'll continue to bank the credits daily for the uh, solo armadas, but I'm looking at probably every third day I'll be running at least the uncommons. If not, uh, then pushing into a rare and an epic. And there we go. We've killed that uh, 54E. As you see, we're pretty shy on, on uh, hull health. That was a really close uh, epic armada. Uh, but that had finished the event for me, and it uh, finished this round of solo armadas we hope this video helps you to get the most out of board solo armadas added to star trek fleet command come visit us at our website and join us for further discussion on our discord server linked in the video description we hope we earned your thumbs up on the video and your subscription and as always we appreciate your sharing and comments Live long and prosper, Commander. We hope to see you at Starfleet Academy.